We're going to go back and work on the hat a little more and add some more shading. I'm using some of the um, dark gray value to darken the shading here on the ends of the hat. And I'm just floating that color along the edge. You can walk that back in a little bit just by moving your brush in with each stroke closer to the center of the hat and then smoothing over. I'll do one more. I'm going to turn over and do the, the other end. And then we'll darken up here a little bit on the the crown of the hat also. Okay, while we're waiting for that to dry, let's uh, put a first layer on our hearts. And we've used the, the yellow oxide color as a base color for the heart. And that'll be our highlight. And I'm going to go float over that now with some naphtha red to start adding the red color of the heart. A little too much water. So we're just going to come out to a pass along that outer edge with some red. And work that down to the bottom point. Now I'm just going to let that one dry because if we go back the other way it's, it's too hard to keep your brush out of that wet float. So I'm going to go down to the foot and do the same thing on the heart on the foot pad. Just do a float down the one side of the heart. And you'll see how floating that red over top of the yellow gives you a real bright intense color. So we're going to let that dry and do probably float at least two, a couple more layers over top of that to build up that red color. We want to incorporate some more red into our design so we can do that on the firecrackers. And I'm going to just use the script liner brush and do some little stripes and things just to bring that red color into the design in other areas. I'm just going to run a stripe around just above each of the navy blue stripes on this one. Maybe this one will, will stripe, do vertical stripes around the top and the bottom. Let's do some diagonal stripes around the top of this one. And we'll go back and add a yellow star here in the middle. And we'll do some horizontal stripes on this little back one. I'm going to draw in a yellow, a yellow star using the yellow oxide here on the center of this firecracker. And this is just one of those little stars we did as kids where you do a the triangle shape or and then do the crossbars and connect all of them. These are just little futsy details. They don't have to be real exact. Let's get some color in on our, our leaves on our plant. So we're going to do a, a mix of the yellow oxide and a little bit of the ultramarine blue. I didn't really want to incorporate a totally different color to keep our palette limited on this design. So we can make um, a green by mixing the yellow and blue that we're using. So I want to just go in and work that color around the outside edges of the leaves and you can let the, the center of the leaf stay a little bit lighter. You 
You can vary your green by just adjusting how much blue or yellow you put in it. Here I've gone a little bit to a bluer green where some of these are more yellow. So I'm going to go back and just add some touches of that blue green to some of the other leaves. Maybe drag some down the stems. Okay, our hat's dry again, so I'm going to go back and add a little bit more shading to it. I'm going to switch to the medium value of the gray. The sailor hats have a lot of stitching along that brim, so I just want to come along and do some shading where those stitch lines would be. So I'm just dragging the edge of chisel edge of my brush just in a following the contour so that we can get some shading where those little stitch lines go. You want to try to keep them even. Let's do a little bit of highlighting on our basket. Okay, I'm using the little number eight Sable Tech round to do some dry brushing. And I'd like to do some little highlights on some of these cross weaves to give the effect of them going over and under each other. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the raw sienna. And just a touch of white to make it a little bit more opaque. And brush some of the excess off my paper towel and just scrub some of these sections where I want it to appear that the paint is or the weave is going over top of the one underneath. So on each, each row you'll see well, if I highlight it vertically on this intersection, on this one I am going horizontal, then back vertical. And on the next row it's just opposite. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal. So that gives the effect of these little dark lines weaving in and over and under each other in a basket weave. If you need more highlighting, just Lighten up your mix a little bit. Now I'd also like um, a little more shading probably on the, the yellow areas in between. So I'm going to do a mix of the raw sienna and burnt umber. So it's sort of an in-between value. And then come back in and do a little bit of shading here and there. Again, I'm trying to sort of do every other one so that they're opposite each other in a checkerboard type of pattern. So maybe on the in-between ones we'll go the other way. So if we've got shading here at the top, we'll shade here at the bottom above it. I'm just randomly trying to shade some of these lighter squares just to give a little bit more dimension.
to shade the ball on the top of the flagpole with burnt umber plus a little bit of the naphthol red mixed into it. I'm just floating down that left side and around the bottom. I'm going to give that kind of a brass look. Let's go back to the hearts again since they're dry. Put some more red. Let's put a little bit of this brighter red here among the geraniums just to give them a little brighter color before we start putting in some highlights on those. And as you're floating this, you can just come off the edges here and there so that you just have some pops of the bright red in amongst the, the darker shading color that we did. These geraniums have a lot of values and tones to them. And I'm just kind of squiggling the brush, and just making little vague C-type strokes. But you can see how pretty that pop of red is starting to look with the other little touches of red that we have in the design. We can transfer the lettering on our flag and get that painted in before we start doing any more shading to the flag. So I'd like you to, to transfer that in with some, some gray graphite paper and then paint those letters in with the naphthol red using a small like number two flat. I'm going to add a little bit of blush to the teddy bear's cheeks. Start adding some accent colors to him. Um, we're going to use some of the naphthol red, and I'm just side-loading that on my brush. I'm using about a half-inch angle. I'm going to put just a touch of the yellow oxide in there just to warm it up to be more of a blushy color. Just mixing this together and then I'm going to just float a little bit out here on his cheek. I'm going to flip the brush over and just soften that together so that we just have a little area of a peachy pink color on his cheek here. And you can add a little bit to the opposite side. It won't show up quite so much because it's in shadow. And this is kind of wet paint, so it goes on in sort of a watercolor effect. Okay, so we've got a little blush on him. I'd also like to add a little accent colors to him in his shadows, using the blues to get a little bit more of this background color of blue in other areas of the design. So I'm just going to use the straight ultramarine blue because we're going to float it over the dark gray it will tone that down when we do some of these floats so I'm just going to come along and just wash that into some of these shadow areas now I'll just add a little bit of hint of that background color to him and carry your eye through the design more. And I'm actually going to do some on the hat to soften that gray that we've used for the, the shadows on the hat. And drag a little bit through the the stitch lines that we've done across. And I'm just doing that on the just the tip of my brush and it's just not regular. It's just a little hit or miss here and there. 
And we can put a little bit on the hat brim. Or the hat, I guess, crown is what that is. Maybe a little bit out on the tip of his ear. Just anywhere you feel like needs a little more interest. Let's also continue some of that blue in other areas. I'm going to put a little bit out here in the flowers. Just again, I'm keeping it more to the, the shadows. You can let a little bit hang out over the edges into that light background. And we'll put some in the basket. It'll end up looking more gray on the basket than it does blue, but it just actually puts that color, puts the color into the basket, and your eye will again kind of merge them together and help your eye travel through the design. And on the basket, I'm keeping the, the blue more over the dark brown, the, the burnt umber shadows. If you'd apply it over the more of the yellows, you'd end up with a, a more green looking color. But over the the burnt umber shadows, it, it gives you more of a just a darker gray value. I'll add a little bit to the, the firecrackers, just floating it down the sides. And you could drag just a teeny little bit along that back edge of the, the flagpole. I'm just using the tip of my brush. And one other place I'm going to do it is I'm going to use it to put a little shadow on the left side of these hearts. And by floating the ultramarine blue over that red, it creates more of a, a deep purple. That's a good shading color. And these aren't really pretty floats. I'm just, you know, washing some color in there. They're not what you typically think of as a, a real controlled floated color. It's a lot looser than that. Let's float some up on the side on the... I'm doing it on the teddy bear's body just to, to put a little shadow around that side. I'd like to see a little more on the hat. Now that it's dried, it's it's softened down into those shadows and doesn't show up quite as much. You'll find when you put wet acrylic paint like these floats on top of things, you'll think they're showing up really well while the paint's wet. But I find as the paint dries, it sinks down into the, the under layers and you end up with you know, things, once they dry, they're just not quite as vibrant as you think thought they were. So we're just adding a little more, a second layer on some of these areas. This is what I find to be the really fun part of the painting. Doing all the base coats and getting up to this point, things just are kind of boring and you're doing the same things over and over. But, you know, when you start adding all these little, little refinements to the to your painting. That's where I find it really becomes more individual and I just find to be the real fun creative part of it. I'm just doing a little wash of the blue over top of that back rim of the basket. I just feel like it's a little too bright and I want to set it back into the background more. So this blue over top of that raw sienna just tones that color down and it's not standing out so much. You see, we still need to work on the, the flag. 
And here's another area where we can incorporate some of that blue into the shadows. I'm again going to float, and I want, want it darker here where it comes up against the basket. So I'm just going to come along and wash some blue back up along that edge. And we may decide we need to tone that down a little bit after we get it dried and see what it looks like. But let's darken back here where it's behind the handle. There's a fold in the flag here, so I'm just kind of floating down the edge of that so it gives a little bit of a effect of a crease in there. So I'm going to base him in the starfish in with some white and just use a small flat or filbert brush, whatever's again most comfortable for you to paint with. I'll try this little number two flat. So while that's drying, we'll add some petals to our geraniums. And I'm going to use just a small round brush. You can also use a you know a liner if it's not too thin. But we want the petals to be lighter. Well, we're going to do some darker ones around the outside just to define those a little bit and then we'll put some lighter ones in in front. So the darker ones I'm going to just mix just a touch of the ultramarine blue in with my naphthol red and you just want to come along and just the indication of a few little petals along these edges in the background. And geraniums are actually little clusters of smaller flowers. It's not one big flower. Each one's made up of, of probably a dozen or so smaller flowers that are all clumped together. They're going to have a lot of little center points that those individual petals are coming out from. So then we want some lighter petals, so I'm going to add some white into that mix so we have a light pink. And you can have different variations of that. And then we're going to come in and plop in some light colored flowers in the centers of our geranium clumps. You can make some more red, some lighter pink, just to have some variation. And if you want some highlights, just make some that are just more white. I'm just laying the, kind of laying the edge of the brush down, just pushing down and lifting up. They don't all have to be a full four petals. You can make some that are like overlap so there's just so we do a big one here and then maybe behind it we're just doing one with three or just one petal peeking out. These are just very loose and we can 
add in some little dots of yellow for the flower centers. So we're, I'm just going to pick up some of the yellow oxide on my brush and just go back in and just touch down in the center of some of these to add just a little hint of that yellow into the flower. You'll add a little more detail to the, the leaves. You'll see some geraniums that have a a darker band along the outer edge. So I'm going to mix up some some of our green on a liner brush and go back in and just do a little like squiggly edge around the the outside of the leaf. It's just in a little bit from the edge. And then with that same liner brush you can pull a little vein up the center and fan that out. Which gives just a just a tiny bit of detail to the the leaves. So I'm just squiggling that band around the outer edge and then pulling a little center vein and fan some extra veins out from that. And you can just dibby dabs dab some other dark colors back in amongst the the stems if you want to give the suggestion of a few more leaves in the background to fill in some of that space. I'm just scribbling in there with my liner brush to, to add a little bit of filler. Fill that in with just a real light wash of the color. Let's go back to our flag now that it's dry and I feel like that blue is just a little too intense for a shadow so I'm going to go back and float just a tiny bit of black over it and be careful with the black because it's very opaque so I'm putting all a lot of water in that and just thinning it out so we just are going to get a wash of that black. You can always use a mop brush to soften floats like that that are washy. I must also float some black on our background. We need to strengthen the shadows in here under the basket. And the starfish. We'll pull that all the way down along the edge of that banner. Go back over here under the teddy bear and put some stronger shadows in in front of him. Let me do a little bit here in front of his foot. The edge of his foot is kind of soft and fluffy on the edges, so just kind of squiggle that float up to the edge. You don't want a, a white space in between him, but you want to keep that irregular edge to it. And just let that trail off on this end. Just soften that out to nothing. We'll 
add some more layers on that, but that's a start. So you can start seeing it's giving it a little bit of more depth by darkening it in closer to the basket. The lettering, it needs a little bit more dimension. So we're going to do some shading on it and a little bit of highlighting. So I'm going to shade the letters just by floating down the outside, the left edge of each letter with a mix of the red and blue. So we want that dark purpley color. I'm just going to brush mix a float here on my palette and pinch that corner out if it gets to be too much across the brush. And then I just want to come down along these and just, just lightly float down that left edge of each letter. And I'm not using my whole width of my brush because these letters are so narrow. They're only about a little over an eighth of an inch wide and the brush is quarter inch. And I don't want to get that a dirty wash out of my background. So I'm just using about half the brush. But while that's drying, I jump around a lot, so we'll put a little highlight on the little brass ball at the top of the, the flagpole. So I'm just going to float just a little bit of white on the top right. And we can also float that down the flagpole. And I'm just staying just, just a hair in from the, the right edge so that it keeps a dark line. So we don't lose that flagpole into the white of the banner. Our starfish is dry, so we can paint that in again. We put the white base coat on to separate it from everything we painted underneath. And so now I'm going to paint over it with a mix of raw sienna and white. We just want kind of a... I guess a sand color if you're likening it to an Americana color. Just a light beigey yellow. While that's still wet, I'm going to just pick up a little bit of the raw sienna and just Work that into the left side just to start a little bit of shadow on the starfish. So on the left side, you know, any place that kind of faces bottom, just, you know, if our light's coming from the upper right, we want to just... Do a little bit of shading on the opposite side of that. And we can pick up a little bit of white and just work that in on the opposite side where the, the highlights of the light would where the light would hit. It's fairly easy to do wet on wet blending, especially on something small like this where you're Paint doesn't dry so fast because you're not painting a huge area to take the time. And I, I like the look of the wet on wet blending because it, it just gives it a little more of a, an oil blended look than floated color. So you can see we've, we've got a good start on the basic shades and highlights for the the starfish.
And we can also come back up and rework the little one that's in the basket because he got kind of lost as we start doing all of our other things. So again, I'm just mixing up some of that white and raw sienna sand color. And uh, rebase him. Add some shading to him and soften that out. And plop down a little more white to brighten up the upper right edges. On the lettering, I'm going to add a highlight to the, the letters with white. And I'm going to use this little number two flat and just side load a little white on the edge. And I'm going to come around and highlight just inside the right edge of each of these letters. I'm staying like a hairline from the edge of the red, so it almost gives the effect that it's outlined. Again, with the white background of the flag, we don't want to put the highlight right up against the edge or it'll just blend the letter into the background. So just, just a hairline away from the edge. We're going to do that on each letter. And you can go back and reinforce those floats that like I said, when they start drying, sometimes they just disappear. Float over this shading on the banner one more time with red. Again, just so create more of a purpley color. I'll just trail that off up here. We'll probably do that several more times with different colors just to, to deepen that shading on the flag. I'm going to add some more flowers to our geraniums just because I feel like we need to fill in a little bit more. So I'm going to take some white and pick some spots where I think we could, could use few more, just some more filler. So I'm going to do some like back, back in here. I just want some underpainting so that we can put that red over top of it and not feel like it's competing with the background. Red's kind of transparent so we want it to be able to show up and I think we need something 
something in here to, to break up this starfish a little bit. So I'm going to put some flowers here and maybe, maybe some back here. I think add a, another leaf maybe over in here. So we'll let that dry. I'm going to shade our starfish a little more. And this time I'm going to go a little darker. So I want, I don't want to go as dark as the burnt umber. So I'm going to mix burnt umber and raw sienna to kind of get a medium brown value. And just to reinforce some of this shading back here on the left side. As I'm using up some of the paint on my brush, then I can go over here to the right side and it'll float, but it'll be a more transparent value, so it's not quite so dark. And we'll do some, some white highlights. And this time I'm going to just do some type of dots, a little cluster of dots here, and then as I come out on each arm of the starfish, I'm just dotting down. Starfish fish are kind of prickly. They call them spiny starfish. So I want just a little bit of texture on him. And you'll probably have to repeat this a couple times because as the white dries, it settles down into that base color. And you start losing the highlights a little bit. And I'll trail a few little ridges off each of those arms just to almost like veins in a leaf. And again, it's just a little row of uh, dab, dibby dab dots. Now, when you get over on some of these on the shaded sides, if, if that white seems too stark against the shading, just step back and do those little dots on the shaded edges with um, raw sienna plus a little bit of white mixed in. So it's just a shade darker. You can do the same thing to this little starfish, just on a, a smaller scale. On the little starfish, I think I'm going to try on these shaded sides, doing the, the little spiny vein lines in some burnt umber instead of the white, just to keep that a little softer and... keep him more in the background. So you can see he still has the spiny look, but he's a toned down starfish, so he goes more into the background of the basket. We don't want him as light as this one here in front. So let's go back and start adding in these extra flowers I decided we needed. Stick some in the background there. And put one out here. That gives our basket a much fuller look. I was feeling like it was looking really sparse. <clears throat> Another layer on the banner, and I'm going to go back to the black this time. Just want a little bit of black on my brush, and I'm going to work that out into a real washy float. And we're going to take another pass at the shadows to darken them down.
add some little wicks for our firecrackers. I'm just going to use some of the gray values. So. I'm not going to do this one here because we've got that flower we have to fill in first, but we'll do this one. So the dark gray can be your shadow and you can come back and stroke over it with some of the medium value gray just to, to give it a little bit of highlight. I'm going to put a little bit of a, a shadow on the star here. And to do that, I'm going to mix, just brush mix a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of the red just to come along and hit the, the left side of that star. And give it a little bit of an accent color. And I'm thinking this firecracker, I think I'd like to do something a little with the top of it. So I'm going to go back and put some, some white stripes on it. We've got the horizontal ones in red at the bottom, and I think we're going to do some white ones on this top and just space them a little bit farther apart. You can just play and decide what kind of patterns you want on these. They can just be, you know, use your creativity and whatever little doodly designs you want to do on those you know, feel free to change them. You're going to add polka dots, um, stripes, stars. Maybe I'll put some polka dots on this one. And now on this one, let's, let's do some a row of polka dots around the band. Those kind of pop out more. And maybe this one we do some diagonal white stripes. I think that makes all of our little firecrackers a lot more interesting. The wicks are dry. I'm going to put a little final highlight on the wicks with some white. Just, just a little bit in from the edge. You know, just off center. So I think that basket looks much better now. Much fuller. And we could add some little buds here, some that aren't quite open. Any place you feel like we need a little bit of filler. Okay, to you know, add some stems, we're going to mix our green again, and we used ultramarine blue and a little bit of the yellow oxide that makes just kind of a dirty green some little stems on these so I'm just putting a little kind of v-shape at the bottom of the clusters and then gonna drag some little stems just to connect them I'll make this thing back in here a leaf. Again, it's just very vague. Okay, and then we, on our new flowers, we need to add some little flower centers, and we can do some of the yellow oxide. You can add a little white to it if you want. These are a little lighter. Let's see if we can get some of those little flower centers to pop out a little more. I just see this little bit of white that I smushed in there to do something with. So we're going to make that a little bigger bud. Put some stems in there. Okay, we're sort of coming down to the, the finish line. I feel like the basket needs a little bit of dry brushing here on the front. We need some little tacks on it to hold the handle or the, the little band together. So going to put some little just a little row of three tacks there and 
those are just some burnt umber with a little bit of raw sienna touched into it. Just make some little dabs. I think the basket over here needs to be darkened behind that starfish. Again, we're just at the point where we're starting to fine tune the design, deciding which things are not dark enough or need some more highlight. So I'm going to come down and wash some of that burnt umber in the basket here behind the starfish so we can darken that. We'll let that dry and then we'll probably go on it, go over another another layer of that to darken a little more. Also, I'm going to wash in a little bit of the browns into the teddy bear just to warm him up slightly. Again, I'm staying mostly in the shadows. Come here along the heart bottom. A little on the bottom of his arm here. We don't want to totally cover that ultramarine blues that we put in, but you can overlap some of it a little bit just to have the colors merge together. And his hat down just a little in a couple spots. The brown just sort of, I guess, grunges it up a little bit, gives a little more of a vintage look, like antiquing. Got a little too much on the background here, so I'm just trying to clean that out. Now on the background, um, well, we've got a lot of this blue, but I would I would like some of the reds and purples to kind of come out into some of this background color. So I'm going to plop in a little bit of of the reds on a couple of these edges, but I'm first going to spray with a little bit of water so that we. Don't worry about it getting too harsh. Maybe a little bit down in this corner where the banner is. And you can brush that out a little bit to make sure it's covered and not too puddled. But I'm going to take my big one inch brush and dampen it and I'm going to work some red onto the palette so that we have a lot of water in it. And then I'm going to come back along here and just dab some of that red in here and there in the background.
You're going to even put some up here in front of him. And here I hadn't sprayed any water, so I'm going to start mopping that out pretty fast because I don't want it to get any hard lines. If you do, just add a little more water to it. It's, it should take a few minutes to dry. You can soften those out. this down so it's flatter. And you can let a little bit of that red come over into the light part of your background. It'll just add a little bit of a, a blush to it. But that little bit of red just really helps pull again just repeating the colors in your design and it helps your eye travel through. I'm going to add a little bit more up in here. As I said, when things start to dry and you're especially when you're mopping them, they tend to soften up to the point where you don't see them quite so much. So sometimes you have to go back and reinforce. A little bit on his hat that I really don't want. Just wipe that off. Okay, I think that's that's a good variation. I'll just add some purple tones to that background. Be sure to wipe your mop brush. You don't want it wet, but you want to get that excess paint out of it so that it doesn't dry in there. If it does, just clean it with some alcohol gel and let the alcohol evaporate before you start using it again. <laughs> 